I do want to state you're doing all this at your own risk. It's really not that difficult or that hard to do. And again, usually you just 90% of motherboards, you disable CSM, you enable secure boot and you're fine for those 10% of people where you disable CSM, enable secure boot, and you go into Windows and you still don't have secure boot, you got to reset those, those keys. And I'll explain more of that in detail further into this video. I do respond to comments. I try to help people where and when able, but you're doing this at your own risk. Uh, messing around in the BIOS can be quite intimidating to a novice. So I'm remaking this video based on the request of some of the comments. Could I give more detailed information on getting secure boot running on your computer? This is Windows 11 Pro and you need to be in UEFI. That's the first thing you need to understand. So you go down here into the search bar, you type in MS Info 32. And this will bring up all of your system information. And as you can see here, I have secure boot enabled. When I did my initial video, the other video, I had CSM disabled. I had secure boot enabled. I would come into Windows and I secure boot was not on. I'll get more detail in that in a couple seconds. Okay, so I'm rebooting the computer. You need to go into your BIOS. On mine, it'll tell you on your boot screen what do you need to what key you need to hit. Usually on mine, it's the delete key. You just keep mass it. Sometimes some of it's the escape key. Some of it'll be F12. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. The first thing you want to do is go in there. Again, you have to be in UEFI. If you're on Windows 11, you probably are UEFI. You need to go in CSM configuration. You need to disable CSM. Then after you disable CSM, save and exit, reboot the system. I already have all this running on mine. Then you need to go to security, go into secure boot. You enable it. Some of these, every BIOS is a little bit different. Some of them you will have to enable custom for secure, secure boot to run. Again, reboot the computer, restart the computer, save and exit. You're telling it, okay, run secure boot. The initial issue I had with this one was I had to go into key management. And then you go into your factory keys, your, your keys here, platform keys. Just click update. You know, if, you, if you've if you done all this, you've disabled CSM and you have enabled secure boot and it's still going into Windows under MS Info 32 and saying secure boot isn't on, that's because your keys need to be updated. So you just go in there, factory, update. Key exchange keys, update. Authorized signatures, update. Forbidden signatures, update. I didn't have to do anything with the authorized TAMs timestamps in OS recovery signatures. Oh, and again, as you exit the BIOS, save and exit, save changes and reset. That was the number one question I was getting on the other one. And you want to be in Windows Boot Manager. You want your boot drive to be Windows Boot Manager. That means you're in UEFI. You have to, your, your drive, your storage device needs to be set up in GPT. This is getting more advanced. There'll be other videos, but again, if you're on Windows 11, you are more than likely in UEFI. If you happen to screw up and you messed up stuff in your BIOS, and you're, oh my God, what do I do now? You're gonna have to pull the CMOS battery and reset the board. Uh, you can't even see the CMOS battery on this particular computer I have sitting here on the test bench right now because that CMOS battery is under the graphics card. You're going to have to pull the graphics card and pull that battery. I'll pull up uh, another motherboard out of my closet here and show you. 
This is the same exact motherboard, same model, same brand as the one that's in this computer. This is the CMOS battery. This is what retains your settings when the computer has no power. If you screwed up your BIOS, you can pull this battery out. It's just a tab holding that in. Pop the battery out. Uh, you're going to have to wait a couple seconds. I'll, I'll give an example of this too. Because all these capacitors, they're going to hold a charge for a couple seconds. Varies on every board. But when you, when you kill the power, it's still going to maintain those settings. for Like on this board, maybe 5-10 seconds. If you pull this battery to reset CMOS, then you just wait a couple minutes. Some boards, they'll have a jumper. That's, again, this is getting more advanced, where you just take a screwdriver and you jump it, and it'll clear CMOS. I don't suggest you do that if you're a novice and you don't know a whole lot. I'm going to give this as an example, of this because this mouse is lit. I'm going to reach behind here, and I'm going to turn the power off to this computer, and you're going to see it's going to take a couple seconds for those capacitors it's turned off to actually discharge. See, now there's no power going that I can, because those capacitors were holding the charge for a couple seconds. I'm going to throw this in here real quick too while I'm making this video. I had a couple people in the comments say, okay, I followed your instructions. Now my BIOS doesn't come up anymore. Again, you can pull the battery and reset your BIOS back to default but just know that you're gonna to have to go through and redo all your settings because you've cleared the motherboard. It's not retaining anything that you've done. But I know exactly what these, they get in here, they start playing around with the BIOS and what they do is they end up enabling Fastboot. You do not wanna enable Fastboot if you wanna get back in your BIOS. If you enable Fastboot, it skips the BIOS and it goes straight to Windows, so. Don't enable fast boot. You're only saving two, three seconds on a boot up anyway. But if you want to get back into your BIOS and change settings, you have to leave that disabled. Um, I hope this helps. I hope it's a little bit more informative than my first video because my first video was in like a minute and 20 seconds. But um, that one's kicking butt. And I'm, I'm making like 1.7 cents per view on that one. And that's because it's short. The longer the video, the more I make. I'm not really so much in this for the money, but if YouTube's going to make money off of me, I might as well get paid for the views.